I'm a big fan of Wolf River's 4040 coil. It's an easy way to get on the air with a 17 foot or a 213 inch whip and uh, the coil unit itself. Uh, but one problem I have with the Sporty 40 is that while it works with Chameleon's new SS25 uh, 25 foot whip, uh, you have to retract this whip to its 17 foot length in order to be resonant with the coil. And I don't like that because there's eight feet of whip we're not using. With a base loaded antenna, the more wire or whip you can get in the air, the better its performance is gonna be. So I went about to fix that. And what I have here is the solution. This is a coil for the Chameleon 25 foot whip so that you can use your whip fully extended on the 40 meter band. And I'm gonna show you how you can build this coil yourself. My quest for building a 40 meter coil for the Chameleon SS25 whip started here. I found a web page by Gary, KI5GRD, documenting on how we built a knockoff Sporty 40 coil for the 17 foot whip. His plans were insightful and got the gears going in my head on how I could adapt his design for the longer 25 foot whip. If you're thinking of building a coil either for the 17 or the 25 foot whips, check out his page. It's full of details that will help you out. Links in the video description. But the trick is to calculate the proper level of inductance. For a 17 foot whip, Gary calculated that approximately 17 turns of wire is needed to create the appropriate level of inductance to resonate the whip on the 40 meter band. Since I'm using the longer 25 foot whip, I will need less inductance and fewer turns of wire. But how many will I need? Fortunately, there's formulas that will tell you. Opening up the ARRL antenna book in section 21.2 are the formulas for calculating the amount of inductance needed for a base loaded vertical antenna. To make the math a bit easier, I found a website that'll do the work for you. The coil shortened vertical antenna calculator over at 66pacific.com calculates the level of inductance needed for our whip. Plug in the numbers and it spits out an answer. My antenna height will be 25 feet and my coil height will be zero since it is a base loaded antenna. Diameter of the conductor is the thickness of the wire you are using. My coil is made of 14 gauge enameled copper wire. It has a diameter of 0 0.0641 inches. Finally, enter the operating frequency in megahertz, which will be seven for the bottom of the 40 meter band. Press calculate and I come up with 4.4 microhenries of inductance. With that number in hand, I can go over to the next calculator, the coil inductance calculator, to figure out how many turns of wire on my form I will need to achieve that level of inductance. My form is a PVC coupler with an outside diameter of 1 and 5 eighths inches. I enter 1.625 and I estimate the coil is going to be about 3 quarters of an inch in length. At this point, I start plugging the number of turns of wire into the calculator until the results match my desired level of inductance. You may not get an exact match, but that's okay. Getting it in the ballpark is fine. The end result is 10 turns of wire. With this in hand, we can start building our coil. Almost all of the parts for this coil I found at my local home improvement or hardware store. With the exception of two parts, the 14 gauge enameled copper wire and the 3 8 inch fine thread female to the female coupler. Those I ordered online. I've got source links for everything in the video description below. The parts for the 40 meter coil are as follows. Two 3 8 inch by 24, one and a half inch stainless steel bolts. Four 3 8 inch stainless flat washers. Two 3 8 inch stainless lock washers. One one and an eighth inch long 3 8 by 24 fine thread female to female coupler. Two one inch PVC plugs. One one inch PVC coupler. 14 gauge enameled copper wire. You're gonna need about six feet for the project. PVC cement two inch shrink wrap tubing or electrical tape to hold the coil in place. For tools, you're gonna to need a couple of 9 16 inch wrenches. I found a socket and a wrench work best. Wire cutters, pliers, step drill bit, and a 1 8 inch standard drill bit. With the parts and tools assembled, let's put our coil together. Mark the center point on the PVC plugs and using the step bit, drill out a 3 8 inch hole. Do this on both the plugs. Assemble the ends of the plugs with stainless hardware, putting washers on both sides of the PVC and a lock washer between the flat washer and the bolt.
tighten well with the wrench in the socket set. Do this for both plugs. Cement the plugs into the PVC coupler. Cementing is necessary, otherwise the wind load of the 25-foot whip will cause the coil to flex. Once the cement is dry, move on to the next step. Drill two 1 8 inch holes alongside the coupler. I marked a center line on the coupler and put two hash marks a 3 quarters of an inch apart. Try to get them centered, but if they are off slightly, it's no big deal. Carefully drill down so there are two 1 8 inch holes on one side of the coupler and two holes on the opposite side. Now the fun begins, wrapping the coil. Push the wire through the hole in the coupler. If the wire is straight, you should have no problem finding the hole on the other side. Push through enough wire so you can eventually wrap it around the bolt. Next, start making the coil. You will want 10 turns of wire. Every complete revolution counts as a turn of wire, so the ends where the wire starts and finishes are counted as one turn. With that in mind, you should have nine complete revolutions along with two half turns on the ends for a total of 10 turns of wire. Counting the coil, we have 10 turns of wire. Remember the starting and ending turn count as just one complete revolution of wire. At the 10th turn, cut about seven or eight inches of wire. You'll want enough to be able to easily push the wire through the holes on the other end of the form. Trim the excess wire so you have enough to wrap it around the bolt. Sand the enamel coating off the ends of the wire and wrap them around the bolt. But before we tighten the nut down to secure the connection, let's check our handiwork. Connecting the coil to an LCR meter, we can measure the inductance. At least we know the formula is reasonably accurate in delivering a good real-world value. To finish up the coil, wrap the wire ends around the bolts and tighten down with the nuts. On one end, add a female-to-female -female coupler. Finally, wrap the coil with tape or use the heat shrink tubing to keep the coil turns in place. This is a big piece of heat shrink, so take your time. Your coil's now complete. Let's set it up in the backyard and check it out. The coil looks good on the bench. It tests out great in my backyard with the analyzer, but how does it perform over the air? Hey, let's uh, take this uh, coil, the Chameleon SS25 whip, out to a park and find out. Red Mountain State Park. We're testing the SS25 with my new, it's not the Sporty 40, but it's my home, my homebrew Sporty 40 for the SS25. I think we should call it these Magnificent 7 Megahertz. <laughs> oh, I heard somebody ending Whiskey Whiskey. Thank you, Michael. Kilo Fox Niner Whiskey Whiskey. KF9 WW. Over. Uh, Kilo Fox 9 Whiskey Whiskey. You're like 20 over 9 here into Wisconsin, US 1473. Back to you. Well, thank you for the flowers. Just a uh, wire and uh, 80 watts. You're also 5 and 9, very strong. Usually I don't get you this good. Thanks for uh, the park and good luck this evening. All right, yeah, running 50 watts. I got the um, Chameleon SS25 whip and I modified a uh, coil for it. So it's. Um, um, yeah, run, it's working well tonight, so uh, thanks for the contact. 7-3. 7-3, three. <laughs> this is KB9VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Hey, Was there a Kilo 9 November Whiskey India? QSL, QSL, Kilo 9, November Whiskey India. I have you to boom in 5-9 in Northwest Indiana. QSL? All right, hey, thanks for Northwest Indiana. Yeah, you're 5-9 plus Wisconsin, US 1473. Back to you. Outstanding.
Outstanding. Appreciate the activation and love the video. 7-3. Thank you. Hey, you too. You have a great evening. 7-3. Uh, KB9 VBR. Parks on the air. Kira's on. Whiskey Bravo 9 Tango Norway Puck. I heard a Kilo 4 Oscar Tango Tango. USL Michael 5 and 9 Georgia. Thanks for Georgia. 5 9 Wisconsin. US 1473. Back to you. Alright, sounds good. Stay warm, 7 3. You too. You have a great evening, 7 3. KB9 VBR Parks on the Year. Kira's on. Whiskey Bravo 9 Tango November Foxtrot. Gray 4 Mike Tango. Bravo 9. Whiskey Bravo 9 Tango November Foxtrot 5 9 Wisconsin US 1473. Back to you. QSL, please copy 5 9 plus uh, into Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin, 5 9 Whiskey India. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the Wisconsin. Yeah, you're 20 over 9 here on Rib Mountain, so thanks a lot for the contact. You betcha. Good luck. <laughs> 7 3, have a good one. Gave in on VBR, parks on the air. QRZ. KB9 VBR parks on the air. Last one. Kilo Papa 4 Yankee Alpha Tango. Kilo Papa 4 Yankee Alpha Tango. Kilo Papa 4 Yankee Alpha Tango. Yep, Kilo Papa 4 Yankee Alpha Tango. Gotcha 57 Wisconsin, US 1473. Back to you. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the Puerto Rico. You too. You have a great evening, 7-3. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. We're going to go QRT. We'll be on the air tomorrow. KB9 VB are going to be QRT. Oh, wow. Puerto Rico. <laughs> well, at least we know the antenna works. Wow, that was one heck of an activation. Now, to be fair, uh, late shift on 40 meters can generate some pileups, but I really have never seen a pileup as long and sustained as the ones I had that evening testing my 40 meter coil for the uh, 25 foot stainless whip. It was just crazy. I was on the air for about an hour in, on, in the evening, uh, just after uh, 6 p.m. local time, uh, 0 hundred Zulu. And um, in that hour's time span, I had over 107 contacts. And it was just one right after the other, pile up, pile up, pile up that entire hour. It was crazy. Band conditions were decent. Uh, 40 meters, you know, hasn't been outstanding recently. We're at the peak of the solar cycle, but um, that I think that it, what really makes the difference in, uh, in the low band stuff is more whip and less coil. And my custom 40 meter coil for the, uh, the uh, Chameleon's 25 foot really <laughs> delivered on that front. Uh, I, you know, I've done this at previous Parks on the Air activations where I've, I, instead of using a custom coil, I've, I've just used the uh, Silver Bullet 1000 with the 25 foot whip on 40 and 80 meters and it worked great. So coming up with a design here to do, you know, to have a uh, sporty 40 equivalent for the uh, 25 foot whip, I think really makes a difference. And um, we throw the word game changer out a lot. And, you know, some of, to be fair, some of it really isn't game changing, but I think this is a little bit revolutionary. Uh, much like using the Faraday cloth or the, you know, the ground screen magic carpet kind of deal uh, for our ground networks, uh, creating the, this custom coil for the uh, Chameleon's 25 foot whip is definitely an improvement over using a 40 meter coil with the 17, with the 17 foot whip. Remember, more whip in the air. Less coil, more power out where it's necessary, and uh, less heat, and from uh, uh, that's and and other stuff that's generated in in the coil itself or losses in the coil itself. Uh, power handling, people are going to ask that. I haven't tested this um, to see how high we can go. I know you know with other coils, you know. 
they could, they'll do 200, 300 watts uh, phone. I've got no problems using, I don't, I have no worries using this 100 watts uh, digital uh, do full duty cycle like FT8. I think it will definitely handle it. Uh, some design considerations. Now this was 10 turns of wire. I'm thinking, you know, maybe if I make another one of these, I might try 10 and a half turns. I've made one with 11 turns and um, it dipped the resonant point way down to about 6.7, 6.6 uh, megahertz, a little bit low. Uh, you end up collapsing about one full section of whip in order to get it to resonance on the, on the 40 meter band. So 10 might be, you know, my, uh, might be good. Uh, ten and a half turns might be perfect. You know, just to give you just a little bit more room in in adjustments. Uh, I found that using this in areas where there where the ground conditions aren't the best. You know, it's fro <laughs> you know it's January here in Wisconsin right now, so the ground is frozen. Um, it does. I, I, I found a couple spots where the resonant point did kind of creep up. Uh, so, you know, maybe a little, just a little bit more inductance will give you more of that wiggle room in order to find that perfect tune. But other than that, uh, you know, it worked out, it, you know, the coil worked out great. Uh, I hope, uh, you know, if, if this is something that interests you, uh, try building one of these. It's not that difficult. <laughs> the hardest part was to get all of the, get all of the parts uh, collected. So it's a good, it's a good project that just, you know, if you've got a few tools, uh, just about anybody can accomplish. So, hey, questions, comments, leave them down in uh, the video down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, this coil, the uh, 40 meter coil for the uh, 25 foot whip. Um, if you built one, let me know how it turned out for you. I'll get some, get some test results in. We're going to continue to use this one because I love that 25 foot whip. And I like this. I like the idea of having just a super simple 40 meter coil, just like we do for the 17 foot whips. So this is going to be a permanent addition to my kit. So, hey, thanks for watching. I'm Michael, KB9 VBR. You have a great day and 7-3.